I just started a new project and I was thinking, I was like, you know what, I might as well go and just make YouTube videos of it and push it up. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be creating a timesheet app. It's going to be for like employers. They can invite employees and then the employees can, once they accept the, the invite, then they can log all their hours and we'll be getting into all of that. So it's going to be similar to a timesheet app, a um, little different though. And to find that, um, I don't have it launched right now. I already purchased the domain, but I don't have it online yet. But if you're watching this, like, let's say a year from now, you can just go to this link and you you can see the progress of the site. It's going to be live. And then also, I will have a GitHub account. You'll find it here. And I'll, I'll always have that down in the description. Just go down there and you click on that if you ever want to pull the project down. And then also, I'll have... Uh, these snippet links. Let's say I'm making a lot of changes within a video and you don't feel like typing it all out. Just go down there, click on this snippet link. It'll send you right to a page. And I'll show you that in a second as well. And then the whole reason I'm building this application is I, I kind of, when I'm trying to get up to date with all the newer versions like Bootstrap 4, Font Awesome 5, you know, a lot of these are newer. And then also Angular 8 just came out not too long ago. What I like to do is like build a little side project and build it from the ground up you know and then it kind of forces you to get up to date with everything you know um because sometimes if you're working for clients and things you're usually you might be working with older versions and things like that so i like to build things from the ground up new you know as a side project and it kind of keeps you fresh you know that's why i do that now the tools i'll be using is postman and visual studio code and that's pretty much the tools I think I got all the tools I'm going to be using throughout all these videos. Now it's going to look similar to this. Um, I got this image offline. So it's it's not going to be exactly the same, but it's going to be like a couple fields. Once the employee accepts the invite, there's going to be a couple fields here. They just click on that. Uh, the start time, the end time. And then when they hit save, uh, the employer will know about it. Let's say the employer logs in, they'll see all the times of the different employees' um, times and things like that. I'm thinking I also have like a drop down so the employer could create project list. So the employee could just click on the drop down and click on what project they were working on. Uh, it's still up in the air. And also, I'm open to ideas. So if any of you have ideas as we're going along, just uh, let me know. Also, I'll create like a Patreon account. So let, let's say you're a Patreon, you just go on the Patreon account and give me ideas. And I'll, I'll if I accept any ideas, what I'll do is I'll, I'll give you a shout out on in the video or towards the end of the video. Still up in the air on all that. I have to get, uh, like figure out all the details with everything. But I already have 13 videos created. I already pushed them up to GitHub. And let's go and check that out. If we go here and here on GitHub, um, the way I'm going to label everything is like, let's say for example, video three, let's say you're on YouTube, I'll have video three, then you just come here, look for video three, click on that. And this will be the finished version of that video. So that's the way I'm going to label everything, you know? And then if you don't feel like typing everything out, you could just click on, uh, this and copy and paste, or you could just go right to the snippet. I'll have these. So here is a snippet for one of the videos. And then let's say I'm, you know, making changes in the application DB context, you're running into problems or something. Just come back in here, just copy and paste it right in your project. Don't focus so much on the details. If you're learning something new, me personally, if I'm learning something new, I don't sit there and focus so much on the details. I kind of sit back and take the 10,000 foot view, try to understand the overall objective. And then once you start getting an idea how things are going, then you start focusing on the individual components and the individual lines of code, you know. But if you go right, try to understand everything from right from the get-go, you might uh, crash and burn that way, you know. I notice that happens to me a lot. But uh, you'll be able to find these two links down in the description. So today I'm going to be pushing up this video I'm making now, and then also I'll push up uh, video two. I'll be pushing them up today. So uh, I hope you guys like it. See you in the next video. I'm going to go ahead and add on to the end of this video on how to download this from Git and set it up on your machine. And then also, let's say, for example, I'm at video 80 or whatever, and you're only at video 5. I'll show you how to jump around between different commits or different videos uh, through the command line. And so you, let's say you want to navigate to video 5 commit. You could do it easily. I'll show you that in a second. 
Let's go and just click on this. It's really easy to clone a Git repository, and I'll, I'll show you that. Just click on this. Let's open up the command line. We could do this from Visual Studio uh, Code, but I'll just do it from here. We'll also do it from Visual Studio Code then. And then change directory. I'm going to throw this right on the desktop. I'm going to be deleting this after I'm done. So uh, just move, move it all to desktop. And then it's really easy. You just put git clone. You'll need to have git installed, by the way. And then paste this. Okay, so we successfully cloned it to our desktop. Now I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so here in Vi uh, Visual Studio Code, I'm just going to hit Restore. And yes, I'll just click that. It'll restore everything. Visual Studio Code is asking me about that. Okay, and why that is happening, I'll shut this down. So here is all, all the uh, folders. This is the spa. Here's the API. And you'll be seeing throughout the videos uh, how all this gets built. But right now, I'm just interested, interested in showing you how to set it up. Now inside here, usually there's a node modules folder and these are all the different packages that you're going to need for this, this spa. And here's a package.json file. And here are all the different packages you need. So we need to run a command to go out and fetch all those, those packages. So if we go and we open up the command line, so control tilde, and then from within your spa folder, you, you'll want to run npm install. So let's go navigate into that folder. So CI spa, oops, spa. Okay, and then we'll run npm install. You'll, you'll need to have node uh, JS installed by the way. So install. This will take a minute because there is gonna be a lot of packages that need to be pulled in. And this actually takes a while. So I'll be back in a second after this is done. Okay, so we successfully installed our node uh, package modules. So if we go into uh, here and you should you should see this node modules folder now and it should have all your your packages you need so now you uh, just set up your spa now we need to go and set up our database now I'm using SQLite and I do show you in later videos you know where you can install that and all that so you definitely want to check those out I'm not going to get into all that but I do have SQLite installed now I'm ready to do a migration to set up our database because I do not push up the database with the repository um, so if we go back here and here is the migrations folder. So all you need to do to update your database once you have uh, SQLite installed is navigate to uh, the API folder. So let's go and do that. So change directory and then ci.api. Then all you got to do is run .net, ea, and then database, then update. And then this will run that migrations and update your database and then you should have your database created. All right, so it created my database. If we go in here and here is a empty database. I did not set up any seeding yet, like seeding your database with values or anything. But at this point of this, uh, the application, you should have a database, a empty database not created. Now uh, that will stop you from getting any errors. So now we could go and start running things. So let's go and run our, our uh, API, boot that up, run our spa, get that going, test it, make sure everything's working. Now I'm just gonna jump back to our spa and that is right here. I'm, I'll clear it out, CLS. And then all you gotta do is run ng serve. That will start booting up our spa. That's the Angular 8 application. And then let's go and jump into the other window. Let's boot up our API. So that CLS.net and then run. Okay, so it's listening to localhost 5000. If we jump to the other one, our spa, that is listening to localhost 4200. Good, so we, did, we don't have any errors or anything. This is a good sign. Now let's go in to the front and open this up. I'm gonna restart this. And you should see this. And then if you go into your console, there should be no errors. Right here, we're calling the database, but there's the database is empty. And um, so, but it's working just fine. So that's good. So now, uh, oh, and by the way, in the later version, this will be gone. So if you don't see this, no big deal. Um, it, it means I just deleted this, so it might be different, but you shouldn't see any errors here, in other words. 
Okay, so we successfully ran our application. We got it all set up. Now let's go and jump back to a ver different version. So this is version 13 we are on right now. And if we open up this at version 13 or video 13, this is what this looks like. But uh, let's say you're at video six or whatever, and you wanna jump back to a different version. Well, Git, it's really easy to do that in Git. So let's go and open up uh, our repository. And let's say, for example, if you click on this commits, and let's say, for example, you want to um, jump on video six, this commit, just uh, click on this. This will uh, get the version number. And then we go here and then open up the command line. And then from the root, I'm gonna open a new one here. From, from the root folder, that's where our, our git files are. Run git check out and then paste that version number or the commit number and enter okay so that should throw you back to the older versions so that's how you can jump around the different versions if you're following along and let's say you're you're not that far ahead you could jump back to different versions uh, now in the next video we're going to actually start from the beginning we're going to create that repository we were just looking at and we'll start on that in the next video so i'll see you then